The first stop on the Baltic Trio, Lithuania, has a whole load of must-sees and must-do sights up its sleeve. Forged by long alliances with Poland to the west, conflicts with Russia and Sweden and the Teutonic Knights, and shaped by Slavic builders to name just some of the influences, it's hardly surprising that Lithuania has so many interesting places for the budding traveler. Let's check out 10 best places in Lithuania. Number 10. Vilnius Old Town the sites of Lithuania begin from the old town of Vilnius. This is a real historical center where a special atmosphere of past centuries reigns and there are many cultural monuments. In the old town of Vilnius, ancient architecture has been almost completely preserved. Narrow streets paved with paving stones and cobblestones suggest only walking. While walking along these ornate paths running between ancient stone buildings, also among the noteworthy objects are museums, hotel yards, educational institutions, and residential buildings. Here you can get acquainted with Gothic architecture, see buildings created in the Renaissance, Art Nouveau, Classicism, and Baroque styles. In addition to visual acquaintance with the historical part of the city, a walk through Old Vilnius includes the opportunity to have a snack in a cozy cafe or restaurant. There are also many souvenir shops where you can buy something as a gift to your loved ones and friends. Number 9. Trakai Castle The sites of Lithuania are full of amazing natural colors and real architectural masterpieces. This is exactly how one can characterize Trakai Castle, located 30 kilometers from Vilnius and near the small ancient town of Trakai. The island castle is represented by a Gothic architectural ensemble. A huge princely palace rises in the center. The main building is surrounded by powerful defensive walls and many towers. Trakai Castle is a must-see in Lithuania. It's not just the external picture of the architectural design that will make an impression. A tour through the halls of the palace deserves special attention. The front rooms of the palace are decorated with frescoes, stucco moldings, and stained glass windows. Every detail of the internal and external furnishings speaks of the wealth of the people who once lived within these walls. Even the saddles for the horses were made of gold. The special romance of an excursion walk to the walls of Trakai Castle lies in the opportunity to admire the water surface of lakes Helvius and Luca, washing the approaches to the ancient building. Number 8. Resort Town of Naringa It is difficult to imagine the sights of Lithuania without the resort town of Naringa. This fairly young tourist corner of the country is especially recommended by guides when answering the question of what is worth visiting in Lithuania first. The resort town of Naringa was founded in 1961. However, the history of the origins of this wonderful place goes back centuries. Naringa is located on the Curonian Spit. The resort city is rightly called the Pearl of Lithuania. The town is a haven for artists, as well as an attractive place for tourists from around the world. There you can truly relax and unwind. The beaches of Naringa are distinguished by the highest level of organization and environmental cleanliness. Many hotels and private inns warmly welcome visiting guests all year round. In these places you can fish, actively relax, or simply enjoy walks to places of interest and relaxation by the water. Naringa is famous for its tall pine trees, unique vegetation, clean air, and mild climate. This is exactly the place where you can heal your body and relax your soul. Number 7. Curonian Spit The sites of Lithuania occupy a vast territory. Literally every corner of the country is interesting from a tourism point of view. Not far from the city of Klaipeda, there is a unique area, the Curonian Spit. Part of this area is located on the territory of Lithuania, Naringa, and part of the Curonian Spit belongs to the Kaliningrad region of the Russian Federation, a national park. The territory of the park is washed by the salty waters of the Baltic Sea and the freshwater Curonian Lagoon. The colors of the dune landscapes are truly impressive. This place contains a combination of fir and birch forests. The vegetation will surprise not only biologists. The brightness of local plants and the uniqueness of the geographical picture will encourage ordinary tourists to feel the spirit of true natural beauty. Ecotourism is common here. People come to this park to relax their souls, breathe in fresh air deeply and enjoy the untouched beauty of wild nature. Not far from the Curonian Spit, there are three residential villages and several tourist centers. Number 6. Amber Museum in Palanga what to visit in Lithuania? Of course, the Amber Museum, located in the city of Palanga. This is a unique museum that colorfully tells the story of the sunstone. Having visited the walls of this attraction, you can plunge into the bright colors of a stone fairy tale. 
The Amber Museum was opened in 1963 in a building that once belonged to a famous historical figure, Count Tishkovich. The Count's Palace was built in 1897. Today, the walls of the building have been restored and the surrounding areas have been adapted for comfortable walking and relaxation. But the most interesting thing is in the 15 halls of the palace. A unique collection of amber appears before the eyes of visitors as soon as they cross the threshold of the museum. Consider the living beauty of the stone, feel the attractiveness of amber, listen to fascinating stories about the mining of Lithuanian gold. All this is offered as part of a visit to the museum. Here tourists are told about the life of the founder of the city of Palanga, Count Tishkovich. After visiting the museum, you can take a walk in the park located near the palace. Number 5. Kernov. The sites of Lithuania fascinate with a huge number of protected places of nature. The Kernov Museum Reserve is a tourist destination that is particularly popular among visitors. Kernov is the first capital of Lithuania. The complex of five ancient settlements is located 35 kilometers from Vilnius on the banks of the Neres River. This amazing place preserves the memory of the history of the development of the country and the Baltic peoples. In this reserve, traces of civilizations that live here in the 10th century BC have been found. This place is especially attractive in early July. In honor of the holiday, State Day, the Festival Days of Living Archaeology is organized in Kerna. During this period, you can see grandiose performances demonstrating the features of ancient crafts. Ancient music also sounds everywhere, and a special local flavor is felt in every detail of the holiday. Participants of the holiday can try various medieval fun. For example, compete in martial arts or experience the mastery of medieval warfare. Number 4. Jadiminus Tower The historical centers of the Baltic capitals are real treasure troves of antiquities with narrow cobbled streets, mysterious alleys, and mystical cellars of old houses. The centuries-old heritage of the Baltic states is clearly demonstrated by the sites of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, among which a special place is given to medieval castles and historical towers. Thus, the old town of Vilnius is decorated with the Gediminus Tower, which bears the name of the founder of the capital, Prince Gediminus. The 48-meter tower rises on Castle Hill. From its top, there is a beautiful view of old Vilnius. The tower was once part of the upper castle, built in the 14th, 15th centuries, and today among the fortifications, only Gediminus has been preserved in its original form. The tower was destroyed and rebuilt several times, and in its modern form, it is an octagonal structure within the walls of which is a branch of the Lithuanian National Museum. Number 3. Nine Fort of the Kovno Fortress For those who are interested in the military sites of Lithuania, the presentation recommends visiting the city of Kaunas. It is here that the Kovno Fortress is located, a masterpiece of fortification which could have become one of the centers of tourism if not for a dark milestone in its history. During the Second World War, this fort became the site of the mass extermination of Jews and Poles. Tens of thousands of people were killed in the 7th and 9th forts. Among them, the 9th was used as a prison for prisoners. When the prison was overcrowded, its prisoners were forced into a ditch and shot, and their bodies were covered with slake lime and burned in order to destroy any evidence of the large-scale murder. However, 60 prisoners of the prison still managed to escape, and the Nazi atrocities became known even before the end of the war. Today, among all the fortifications, the Ninth Fort has been preserved better than the others. It has been restored, and within its walls there is a museum dedicated to the tragedy of the Holocaust. Number 2. Old Town of Klaipeda Your travel route in Lithuania covers the western part of the country. You can visit the ancient city of Klaipeda, divided by the Danes River into two parts. On the right side is the modern city center, on the left is the old town of Klaipeda, which has preserved the ancient outlines and atmosphere of past centuries. In the narrow streets of the old town, Lithuanian houses were located next to German buildings. After all, since the 13th century, the city belonged to the Germans and the Lithuanians themselves, who were forbidden to settle here, lived in the city's environs. During the Second World War, when Soviet troops occupied the city, the Germans were expelled to their historical homeland, and after a while, indigenous people, as well as Russians and Belarusians, began to settle in the city. Approximately the same composition of the population remains today. Among the historical monuments of Klaipeda, part of the fort on the Korsk Spit, the remains of the Memmelberg Castle, and among the German heritage, numerous houses of burghers and merchants have been preserved. Number 1. 
Ethnographic Museum Rumsiskis. About 30 kilometers from Kaunas is Rumsiskis, an extensive open-air ethnographic museum that reveals all the natural beauty of the Lithuanian region. It is here that you can fully experience the spirit of Lithuania. Plunge into the atmosphere of the past and hear stories about Lithuania in the 18th, 20th centuries. On 174 hectares of the museum, there are almost 200 buildings brought from different regions of the country, while the age of some buildings exceeds 100 years. Against the backdrop of natural landscapes, there are huts, outbuildings, mills, farmsteads, and front gardens. Along all this splendor, there is a circular walking route about six kilometers long. The central place in the park is occupied by a square laid out with paving stones, where the atmosphere of the ancient county is recreated. Here, in an old tavern, you can taste dishes of national cuisine, and in the Museum of Folk Life, you can see how clay pots are made, laces woven, and jewelry is created from amber, leather, and wood.